So good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar about digitizing energy efficiency in Germany. My name is Benedikt Winter. I'm Senior Manager for Energy Efficiency at Germany Trade and Invest in Berlin. And today I will give you a market overview and I will also moderate the webinar. So let me introduce you to our great speakers. Today we have Henning Edelmann, who is Head of Energy Efficiency in Buildings at DENEF in Berlin. And DENEF is the German Business Initiative for Energy Efficiency. So welcome, Henning. And Henning will give us an overview of the current developments in the building sector, especially regulatory aspects, because there is a lot going on right now. And I also like to welcome Jürgen Ritzek, who's joining us from Brussels, and he's business director um, of the network EEIP, which stands for Energy Efficiency in Industrial Processes. So hello, Jürgen, and he will present us, of course, the industrial sector, and he will highlight some challenges and opportunities. So thank you for being with us. And before we start, I'd like to give you some facts regarding the organization. Uh, so you have the possibility to ask questions uh, to the speakers during the webinar. So we'll have a short Q&A session after each presentation. So feel free to send us questions. It's in the chat box on the right of your screen. And the webinar is recorded. You will receive a link uh, to the recording afterwards as well as to the presentations. And like I said, I will give you an overview of the market for energy efficiency in Germany and the two sectors uh, that we're interested in uh, today, uh, buildings and industry. But first, uh, I need to tell you a few words about my organizations. Uh, it's Germany Trade and Invest, the Economic Development Agency of the Federal Republic of Germany. And our role um, is to support international companies that want to establish a business presence in Germany. So for instance, the creation of a subsidiary here. And for those companies, we offer publications and services, for instance, about uh, tax and legal aspects. We also can support you with financing issues or site selection, and all of this is free of charge. And we also provide market analysis, and that's what I want uh, to do with you today. So let's start with the market overview. And as you know, Germany is one of the worldwide leaders for energy efficiency. And even if many efforts have been made in the past, uh, there is still a huge poten potential. And that's what I illustrated on this slide. You see here um, extract of a study called Green Tech Atlas. And this study estimated the size of the German energy efficiency market for 2016. It amounted at around 80 billion euros, and you also see the growth potential. Um, growth rate would be 9.1% per year until 2025. And the segments considered here are cross-sector components, uh, production processes, that's for the industrial part, and appliances and energy efficient buildings, of course, for the building part. And interesting for you is that this uh, study also estimated the impact of digitization. And they found out uh, that digitization could add an extra 7 billion euros to the market size of about 180 billion euros in 2025. So that's uh, the size of the market that we want to better understand today. Now I'd like to focus on the building sector. That's uh, the first sector that we want to understand better. And uh, we have many participants from all over the world. So I wanted to start with a map of Germany with some key figures about the building sector. So you see here on the map, the density of population around the country. We are a decentralized country with several big cities like Berlin, Hamburg, Munich, but you also see other regions uh, that are very dense with inhabitants. We have 83 million inhabitants in Germany, so of course we have many buildings. Uh, we have 19 million residential buildings, and on top of that, 2.7 million non-residential buildings. So if you have solutions for offices, for instance, that could be interesting for you. And currently we have quite a low level of digitization uh, in the building sector, but digitization will definitely be one of the solutions for Germany to reach uh, its climate goals in the building sector. I wanted to give you an example um, for one segment. Um, here I represented the current and the forecast development of turnover in the smart home sector, especially for the product energy management systems. And you see that the turnover is expected to grow from 510 million euros in 2019 to 
840 million in 2023. And if you consider the penetration rate for this product, it's quite low currently at around 10% in 2019, but is expected to reach 23% until 2023. One other aspect that I wanted to address is policy, because it's also one of the main drivers for the implementation of digitization in the building sector. So here is an overview of the different policies uh, that affect energy efficiency in buildings. And in general, uh, our policy instruments are rather based on information and incentives than on regulations. So I'd like to focus on several incentive programs uh, that support the installation of digital devices in buildings. So there's, for instance, the subsidy programs of the German Development Bank, KFW, for energy efficient construction and renovations. Uh, these programs are very famous and well established on the market. And they also enable to finance smart home and smart meter solutions. Another program is the energy saving meter that is offered by BAFA. It's the Federal Office of Economics and Export Control. And this program support companies developing digital measure measurement systems uh, for different fluids like electricity or gas, for instance. And finally, digital systems are also part of the climate action plan that has just been decided in Germany. And at that point, I'd like to pass on to our expert Henning. Um, I don't have time to address all the aspects that are on this slide, but um, I guess Henning will give us more insights right away. And of course, you can um, get in touch with us for more information afterwards. So Henning, I will give you the word. Thank you very much, Benedict. I hope uh, you can all see my screen. Good morning. Uh, my name is yes. Henning Ellerman. Um, I am with uh, DENEF, the German Business Initiative for Energy Efficiency, maybe. Uh, one or two words about our organization. We are a uh, business association uh, for the energy efficiency field uh, comprising about 180 member companies at the moment. Um, and um, we, uh, sorry, we are a lobbying organization for uh, better framework conditions for the energy efficiency market and also uh, a network of front-runner companies. Now, to get into the details of today's topic, um, let me start with a question. Why does the German building sector actually need a um, digital revolution? And in my opinion, it is um, because so far we have very ambitious goals of almost carbon neutrality by 2050, um, but we are moving at a very slow pace in the building sector and in all sectors, in fact, but especially also in the building sector towards this goal. And we will not reach it with uh, the current pace um, that, uh, that we are adopting. So what we need is nothing short of a revolution in how we build, how we operate buildings, and how we renovate buildings. And we believe that um, digital solutions will, pay, uh, will play a major role in this, in kind of jump-starting uh, the, the renovation rocket um, and, and getting a lot more um, energy savings out of the building stock. How will that happen? Uh, well, on the one hand, uh, we need digital solutions in the buildings themselves to make them future-proof, and that means, um, as Benedict already hinted at, um, home and building energy management systems to operate the buildings more efficiently. Um, that will mean technologies to help integrate on-site renewables, um, such as uh, PV systems and storage. It also means um, making buildings capable of um, uh, demand, uh, of adjusting demand um, to uh, the more and more renewables in the grid, so making them more flexible, and also integrating, for example, um, future rising e-mobility aspects. So the buildings will play a different role in the energy system and um, energy efficiency and flexibility will have to play together. And for that, we need digital solutions much more than we have in the past. Secondly, though, uh, we do need digital solutions because the building 
uh, real estate and construction sectors are some of the most woefully under-digitized sectors in the German economy. So there is a lot of um, kind of money left on the sidewalks, a lot of high transaction cost um, processes uh, that can use digital disruption. So we need digital solutions as enablers for lower transaction costs, better, more customer focused uh, business models, and to make sure that we don't just, when we, when we um, upgrade and retrofit buildings, that we don't just install equipment, but that we make sure that we get the real performance afterwards. That means a lot more measurement and verification um, and new business models around that. And for that, we need digital solutions as well to actually make sure that we reach our ambitious climate goals. Um, speaking of climate goals, um, as, as Benedict uh, already mentioned, we have seen some major uh, policy initiatives over the last few months uh, in Germany in order to get us to reach our 2030 targets after already missing our 2020 targets quite clearly. Um, the government has uh, uh, put forth a number of legislative proposals. Some of them have already passed uh, the legislative process. Some of them are still under negotiation uh, with the German states, for example. But the core of, um, of this new legislation is the uh, climate protection law uh, at the national level, which has sector-specific targets, including a clear emissions reduction target um, for 2030 of um, 70 million tons of CO2 that are uh, still left uh, to be uh, emitted by 2030. And that means compared to the status quo uh, that we need to reduce our carbon emissions in the building sector alone by 40% compared to now until 2030. So that's barely 10 years to reach this very ambitious goal to reduce um, carbon emissions by almost half. Um, how is this supposed to be done? Um, by means of incentives uh, and more incentive programs than we have had in the past, um, by means of a CO2 price on fossil fuels, meaning oil and gas, um, that will start uh, quite low um, but rise over the next few years, and by some limited um, regulation, now, at least from now until 2023. This is complemented and driven by EU-level legislation, for example, a governance um, uh, regulation that uh, means that we have annual reduction targets for each um, country, and if countries don't manage to reduce CO2 emissions uh, by a certain amount in the sectors that are not covered by the European um, Emissions Trading Scheme, that means that they have to actually buy certificates from other countries um, at possibly a very high cost, and this will be on an annual basis. So every year now, the German climate protection law stipulates that um, all ministries need to monitor whether they are reducing uh, CO2 in their responsible um, sectors, and if they don't, they need to immediately come up with um, a, a direct action program to get us back on track. So there is a built-in mechanism to make sure that if we miss targets with the measures that we have decided on now, uh, we have to immediately come up with additional measures or, or tougher reg regulation, for example, in order to meet those targets. We also have direct uh, European legislation, such as the uh, Efficiency Directive, Buildings Directive, or um, reporting requirements for, um, for, fin for the financial sector and uh, large uh, publicly traded companies that are also driving uh, legislation in Germany um, to get more efficiency out of the building sector. This is just a very, very rough draft. If you have questions about that, please let me know. Um, what do we have very specifically on the, in the digital field um, that's coming up or already in place? We have mandatory energy audits uh, for um, larger companies of more than 250 employees or 50 million euro turnover annually. Uh, we have a smart meter rollout ongoing, um, and uh, we will very soon um, get um, an implementation of a European directive for retrofitting um, EV charging uh, equipment in uh, commercial buildings. Um, the U European directives are also requiring us um, to come up with a plan to retrofit 
uh, large commercial buildings with um, energy monitoring and possibly even automation. Um, but that is still not clear how we're going to implement that. But that is definitely on the horizon uh, for the German market in terms of what needs to be implemented in buildings now or soon. Um, Benedict already mentioned that we will um, we will uh, increase funding um, for uh, the current subsidy schemes that are available. Um, there will be higher grants um, for um, all kinds of energy efficiency retrofits in buildings, including home energy management and building energy management systems. And uh, just to give you an idea, um, there will be, it will be co-funding of at least 20% for almost all measures. Um, and the additional funding from now until 2023, uh, on top of what's already there, is an additional uh, about 5 billion euros. Um, so if you take a 20% uh, funding rate, that means it stimulates investments um, of about 25 billion euros over the next four years. So that's not bad uh, for a program like that. Um, I will leave some of the other points out here um, just to um, not clutter, uh, clutter the presentation, but uh, feel free to ask about any of these points. Last but not least, um, to dive a little deeper into um, some of the sectors. We have, uh, as Benedict mentioned, a quite low penetration rate for um, home energy management systems in Germany at the moment. Um, there is a smart home market that is growing and is driven largely by comfort issues as well as energy savings and increasing also transparency from the one hand, um, so from the, from the energy consumption point of view, and on the other hand, uh, it is also driven uh, by uh, the fact that increasingly people are installing PV on their roofs not to feed it into the grid, uh, but to use it on site in their buildings for their household use. So um, increasingly also with batteries um, uh, on site, so uh, this topic is something that is driving um, digitization in the uh, residential sphere very much. Um, in commercial buildings, Germany has traditionally been strong on building automation and controls, um, but systematic energy management systems and uh, real sub-metering down to a individual uh, component or installation level is definitely not standard yet, but increasingly on the radar of property companies and also corporate real estate management um, because they do see that they have uh, increasing climate risks and possibly also regulation risks and we get many requests right now from companies that are asking okay what is coming uh, what do i need to do in order to make sure that i am not exposed to any risks um, in the next few years uh, do i need to actually find out uh, how my buildings are performing because many um, property companies even today don't have a good overview of the energy performance of their buildings. So there's little transparency in the market at the moment, almost no benchmarking in commercial buildings. Um, the data on residential buildings is pretty good, but commercial buildings is almost a black box. So there is a lot to be done here in the digital field, not just um, in terms of energy performance, but as I mentioned, the whole sector is under digitized. So there is a whole uh, hype right now about prop tech companies that are digitizing a lot of the processes in the uh, building sector. And um, feel free to enter this market. It's early days and there is uh, tons of opportunities in um, all, all along the value chain of construction and real estate um, that is waiting to be disrupted, including building information management, including any kind of um, digital planning tools with artificial intelligence for optimizing energy, um, or for uh, digitizing energy audits, um, analyzing large portfolios, anything like that. Also, industrialized retrofits that are in a, industrializing and digitizing part of the value chain of renovation um, are gaining ground now with uh, first uh, contracts being signed for, by large uh, housing companies to have buildings renovated. This is the background of this is that people want better quality, they want guarantees, they want maybe lower costs, um, and they want to save on manpower because Germany um, largely is facing a, a manpower shortage for the renovation topic. So anything that gets higher productivity out of one craftsperson um, is highly appreciated. And last but not least, uh, ESCO models 
anything uh, that delivers guaranteed savings and requires a good analysis is going to be on the up over the next few years. And that's just a brief snapshot of what's going on right now. Uh, and I turn over back to uh, Benedict. Feel free to ask any questions. Yeah, thank you very much, Henning. I will leave your contact data for a while. And in that time, I will be able to ask you some questions that arrived uh, over the chat during your presentation. So the first question, if you're ready to go, um, sure. is there a discussion about rebound effects in Germany already? Uh, there is a discussion about rebound effects, um, although we would say that uh, often it's, it's, not, it's slightly, uh, a slightly misguided discussion. Um, because the uh, the fact that in some sectors energy consumption is rising is uh, not a result of higher energy efficiency, but it's it's a result of uh, of higher um, income levels and and kind of shifts in um, in uh, customer ad and consumer attitudes and so on. So it's not strictly speaking rebound. Um, energy efficiency has been able to offset um, a lot of the, for example. Um, growth of uh, living area per person um, that we are seeing in Germany. So people are on average now using more space to live um, than they did uh, a few decades before and energy efficiency has been offsetting um, that uh, increase in living area, um, but it hasn't been able to reduce overall consumption as much as it would have if people were, were still living in smaller apartments. In terms of digitization, um, Energy efficiency is a huge topic because digital um, solutions, especially data centers, um, are one of the sectors where energy consumption is definitely increasing. Um, so the government has it on its radar to reduce um, energy consumption and, and increase energy productivity of data centers by, for example, addressing the uh, topic of uh, cooling and uh, waste heat, uh, where we have most of the energy consumption in the uh, ICT sector. But overall, um, ICT for energy efficiency, meaning the kind of building energy management and so on, definitely needs a lot less energy than it saves. Um, but of course, as more sectors in general digitize, uh, the demand for, for data centers and so on increases. So um, there's a huge potential market for energy efficient solutions to get these centers run and cooled. Okay, thank you for that answer. I'm looking at the time. I see that I guess we would uh, continue with the next part about industry. So thank you, Henning. And if we Pleasure. have more questions at the end, we could um, try to take them. But for now, I will continue with an overview like I did for the in the, for the building sector, um, I will give you an overview of the industrial sector. So you probably know that Germany is one of the largest industrial countries in the world. And I just wanted to show you um, a bit of geography about our industry. So here I represented the number of production sites in manufacturing industry by federal states. And you see that we have, we have the strongest uh, industrial regions located in the west and in the south of Germany. And I recall here that with Germany Trade and Invest, we can support you finding the right location for your business. So it might be a criterion that you want to consider. And otherwise, the industry has been investing a lot in energy efficiency in the last years. Um, we consume a lot of energy. So last year or in 2017, uh, about 700 million euros were invested for energy efficiency measures. And here we're talking mainly about still uh, analog or um, traditional energy efficiency measures like heat recovery systems or heat pumps or CHP, but it's clear that digitization will also play a major role to lever the remaining energy savings in the industry. So again, I'd like to mention the policies uh, that affect digitization in the industrial sector. Again, it's mainly based on incentives. And currently there are two incentive programs that could be interesting for you. The first one uh, is the Energy Efficiency in Business program, which offers uh, either credits via the development bank KFW or direct grants. And there is a module, module three of this program, which focuses on digital solutions. It supports uh, the implementation of measurement and control technologies, uh, as well as energy management softwares. And those um, measures can be funded up to 40% of the eligible investment costs. 
And BAFA, the, the, pro, the provider of this uh, subsidy program, publishes a list of energy management softwares that are eligible for subsidy, for instance. There is also a competitive support scheme that supports the most efficient projects in terms of CO2 savings. And under this scheme, it is uh, possible to get subsidies for the installation of sensors and measurement and control technologies again. So if you have uh, questions about the instruments, uh, please get in touch afterwards, because now I'd like to pass on to Jürgen Ritzek from EEIP. And he will tell us more about technological developments, but also about opportunities and challenges. So Jürgen, if you're ready to go. <clears throat> Jürgen? So, hello everybody. Good morning. Thanks, Good morning. Benedict. <laughs> I hope you can see the screen now. Not yet. Not yet? No. No, we don't see your screen right now. I yes, there okay. you go. Okay, perfect. So, um, yeah, so once again, good morning. Um, as Benedict said, I will now try um, basically to give you um, a brief overview about uh, the energy efficiency market um, concerning the German industry and specifically about the digitization side of it. Uh, it's obviously not about the details. Um, if you have any detailed questions, I'm happy to do, take them up one to one after this webinar. Um, but I would like to give you an overview about the structure of the market. Um, and obviously the uh, opportunities um, for foreign companies considering entering this market in Germany. Um, just briefly a few words about ourselves. Um, Benedict said already, um, EIP. EIP um, stands for Energy Efficiency in Industrial Processes. That's uh, the name. Uh, effectively, we are a global um, business to business information platform and we focus on the business case of energy efficiency. Um, but also um, the wider energy transition. AEIP was uh, founded in 2011. Um, it is a neutral, not-for-profit platform. And today we see more than 140,000 um, experts from business, technology, finance, policy using EIP services. Um, so let's give it a start. How does energy efficiency looks like from an industry perspective? It's not necessarily only a German perspective, but basically industry views energy efficiency from two angles. Uh, it is either the entire production process. That would mean from your side, you would have uh, some extra expertise in specific sectors. You're, for example, you're a specialist for chemical industries, or um, they look uh, at a specific technology or specific system. Um, that could mean, for example, you are an expert um, on a compressed air solution. Now, with this being the industry perspective, um, it still looks like very physical, very technical. So question is, okay, where is the digital part of it? Um, and you can see it like, like a data layer, uh, like a data layer, um, a layer which is basically covering everything um, from how to physically get the data. Uh, the data gathering part, uh, how to analyze the data or use the data, for example, in simulations. And at the very end, the very important part, um, how to transfer that um, analytical results into action. So how to basically improve the energy performance. Um, and obviously, um, the interesting part is that this data layer is crucial for any solution. So either on the sector side or sector perspective, or um, on a certain technology side. And how does it now link to the market potential? Well, as said, yeah, at the very end, you have to combine the physical layer, for example, the compressor, with the data layer. So, which means you're not selling compressor anymore, that, but you might want to um, sell um, compressed air as a service. Yeah? So, they have a, a very extensive data layer on it. If we take that, it was already said that we arrive at, um, well, as of today, at a volume, market volume of around 80 billion euro. And it is estimated um, that this volume will grow to 180 billion in 2025. 
And if you see that here on the right side of the chart, that is even more than estimated for the entire environmentally friendly power generation, storage and distribution sector. Um, what you can also see on this chart here on the left side um, is something which is um, well, has a headline called Industry 4.0. And this also is a nice basically presentation showing that uh, combination of the two layers. So you see the physical layer and the digital layer. And this industry 4.0 um, picture is a little bit broader than just on the industrial process side. It uh, also covers uh, the supply chain part of it. But interestingly, um, this is very relevant um, to have in mind when you think about wording because the industry 4.0 is something which is very known in industry. Um, and more important, even energy efficiency is one of the most important use cases in that industry 4.0 picture. Uh, and now there is some ice on the cake. Um, that was mentioned already by Benedict. Um, there is a market potential of around 7 billion extra, you might say. Um, and that is coming from new business models um, coming out of the digitization. Um, and that is, you can see here, covering a number of um, um, areas, probably a few more, um, like new processes, smart robots, product communication, or augmented reality, uh, which means, okay, in a new process, the process can be more energy efficient. Smart robots also allow basically different production processes, which has an impact on the energy um, used. Product communication, that refers basically to the interaction between products, um, people, and processes in a factory. And that might mean that the very end also to optimize processes, and that means to uh, reduce energy. Um, and the augmented reality um, is also something which is uh, already used in some processes, mainly for, um, for maintenance per, um, um, things, but it can also be used um, basically in solutions to save energy. And this development, that is at least the prediction um, of a study made by Roland Berger for a German ministry, um, is estimated to deliver another 7 billion, billion euro of market potential in 2025. So briefly summarizing, um, you know, this, this is basically a kind of three layers. Yeah? So you have the physical production, um, you have the data layer, and you have then this ice on the cake, the extra new business model layer. Obviously, it's more a mental structure um, because these uh, um, layers do not exist usually um, alone in the market. Uh, so, you know, any physical layer has a data layer on top of it. But uh, if you consider that uh, new business model ice on the cake on top, you arrive at a market potential of nearly 190 billion in 2025. Well, this looks like good news. And these are good news, um, but as always, there are some drivers and challenges behind. So what can that be? Um, there are very many on individual case level, obviously. But here I can only highlight um, a few um, broader ones. So a driver is, and uh, I think Benedict mentioned it also at the beginning, uh, in principle, the German industry is very interested to invest in energy efficiency. Yeah, due to legislative reasons, um, it can be reasons basically to hedge against price volatility, uh, CSR reasons. So that is basically a good starting point. But on the other side, we're talking about industry, um, and industry is business driven, uh, meaning business case driven. And that means also, usually they expect a payback of energy investment um, of less than two years. That might be different for some. Um, um, solutions, but in principle, this is a kind of line you should have in mind. Um, secondly, um, I mentioned before had industry 4.0 being very much known in the market. Um, this is a nice driver for energy efficiency because energy efficiency, as said, is a key use case in that scenario. Uh, on the other side, um, as it is a broader uh, um, scenario, um, that means there's also a lot more knowledge needed. Um, to become an active player in that industry 4.0 setup. And then uh, um, at the last one, what I mentioned as the eyes of the cake, um, well, yes, many in industry uh, have big fears that they fall behind uh, in that new business model development, that they're outpaced by competitors. So they will be interested in, uh, in, in, in going into it. Uh, on the other side, it is still in uh, its infancy, 
Um, so that means it's a, um, you know, it's a high risk market. And in addition, um, this kind of market sometimes can be categorized as a winner gets it all. So from the competitive side, that might be a challenge as well. So question is, when you think, well, are we ready? What should you do or where could you go from here? The first point is clear. Um, you know, when you do a first draft plan, you should um, think about, okay, do we um, handle the basics? On the data side, you should have in mind that Germany is a rather sensitive country when it comes to data. And secondly, obviously, you have um, you should have clearly defined where you can add value in that market. Right? We talk about technology, about processes. Um, so you have to see where you sit in that, where your digital solution can add value in that market. Um, and then um, if you would like to go a step further, um, what we believe is um, it is very, very important um, to start um, engaging with key actors in the market at the beginning. And two of them um, are present here uh, on the webinar, Benedict from uh, German Trade and Invest and Henning from, from Denef. Um, others are, for example, the platform industry 4.0. Um, but it could also be interesting to engage with German research institutes, and there are around 180 at the moment who are dealing with the digital, the digital part in, um, in, uh, in industry. Um, and this engagement basically um, delivers you um, a few very important um, aspects basically um, um, at the beginning of a market entry. Um, main point is it delivers you or give you access to partners but also uh, knowledge about funding and legislation um, and the engagement with research institutes um, give you also a feeling about the directions the market will take in the future. So if that is about the, the basics, the structure and the drivers and challenges, um, I just would like to close with a, with a you know, very short outlook. Um, it's going a little bit beyond industry or you could call it beyond industry. Um, the International Energy Agency sees markets merging, and that means um, we are moving beyond the, the end-use efficiency market, and end-use basically can understand from being industry, to a um, system energy efficiency, which means um, you are also integrating the industry with the wider energy system. Um, that's uh, attractive because it would give you access to another 130 billion euro market potential. But the big challenge here, and nobody really has an answer right now, I think, is how to crack the business case. So, and that's uh, everything from my side. If there's okay. any question. Yeah, thank you very much, Jürgen. We have uh, several questions and I think we have a little time to answer them. So the first one would be, what is the potential exact, exactly for energy efficiency in industry? Or in other words, what savings expectations would a cement or steel manufacturer have, for instance? Yeah, so that's a good question. What's the potential? Um, it's very clear that it's very different by sector and companies. Um, when you look for indicators, well, um, there is, for example, there's a program by the European Commission, um, which is about developing factories of the future. And in that program, they have outlined that they expect industry uh, factories to deliver solutions which can uh, reduce energy consumption at least by 25%. That could be an indication. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. And we have another question maybe for the two of you. I think it's quite interesting. Um, how would you see the societal expectation to act on climate change, investing, um, sorry, influencing investment in energy efficiency initiatives, or are they more influenced by economic payback incentives for companies? I, I guess it would be for the two sectors. Do you have an opinion? Is it more driven by societal expectations or by economic payback? Do you have an opinion, maybe Henning or Jürgen? Well, um, I can say a few words about industry. Um, I think, uh, yeah, the typical, the typical answer is depends. In industry, it's very much a business case that's correct. Um, there can be there can be scenarios where the public opinion, the CSR side of it, um, might be very strong. Um, if you think about CSR, you often also see about um, financing um, uh, and reporting. So the financial sector engagement, um, which you can then say is more um, a business um, topic again, as finance sector is also more and more um, forced basically to drive out non-environmental friendly investments. 
that is another driver. Um, but societal, on industry, less, I would say. Okay, I think we won't we won't get uh, Henning's answer because we lost him, I think, with the connection. But um, then I will just uh, come to an end with this webinar. I like to thank you, Jürgen, at that time. And I think our participants have gained a good understanding of the status quo of digitization of energy efficiency in Germany. And of course, we would be happy to stay in touch with you afterwards. And so here is my contact data on the screen. So feel free to contact me if you consider an expansion to Germany, of course. And if you need uh, more detailed information, you can also visit our website. Here I've uh, put some links. Um, so for instance, we have a publication about construction and green building in Germany. And you can also subscribe to our energy efficiency newsletter because as you heard, there are many political regulatory changes right now. So we would be happy to keep you updated, of course. And also feel free to get in touch with our speakers. Uh, they have also provided their contact data. So we're now coming to an end. It was a pleasure for myself to present the webinar. And of course, I'm looking forward to hearing more about your expansion plans to Germany. So thank you again to all the participants and to our speakers, Henning and Jürgen. And now I wish you a very nice day. Goodbye. Bye, Jürgen. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye.